Hello everybody, and I just want to welcome you all to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures. And before we get started, I just want to put a big thank you out to everybody. I um, reached over 100 subscribers on my channel, which is for me awesome. I'm really happy about it and thrilled that um, you guys actually like watching my videos um, and the content on them. So with that said, um, in this we're gonna get we're gonna get started on a new video and making a new lure. Um, what I wanted what I wanted to do on this one was I'm kind of building on the uh, the crankbait that I made before. Same style, it's a little bit smaller. Um, the idea was to kind of use it in the springtime for musky and use a smaller lure. So again, I'm using two pieces of uh, basswood that are um, glued together. And at this point right now, I'm just cutting out the blank. So using the bandsaw and cutting along the lines. The idea for this lure, what I, how I wanted to make it, instead of using screw eyes or twist wire eyes, um, I wanted to make it a through wire um, lure, something I've never done before. So... I am learning along. I am learning as I go on this. I'm sure I'm, I'm probably gonna make some horrible mistakes. Um, there's also other things that I tried doing that I've never done before. Like, um, well, I'm trying to get better at painting gills. So, this one's gonna be another education in painting gills and using stencils and things like that. Things that normally I haven't really used before. All right. So the blank is made. I already got it cut out, and. Um, Basically, all I'm doing here is just sanding it, making making the edges smooth, and getting that basic shape down before we start um, using the, before we start carving it. So after we're done sanding and getting the shape made, getting everything all smooth, uh, you can see the glue line in the middle of the two pieces of wood that were uh, glued together. We're going to use that glue line as our reference center. Um, from there, everything is going to um, be built around that center. Whereas whether we're make how we're going to make the body, how we're going to shape it, and everything's all going to be done around that around that center. So uh, here, here I am, just kind of freehanding a taper for the for the tail, and instead of using a bandsaw, we're going to go back and um, just sand off since we're not going to be sanding a whole ton of material. And you see the um, the blizzard of sawdust from the sanding or sanding dust when we use the sanding wheel. So we're just trying to get everything equal. Do a few passes here, a few passes there. Check and make sure everything looks even. And I think when we're actually satisfied with um, how it looks, then we're gonna call it, we're gonna call that finished. And then we'll start um, hopefully getting ready to carve the lure out. And we should see that in the next couple next slide or two. All right. So here I am marking the center with a pencil. That way it's easily seen. Um, kind of measured out roughly where I want my uh, chamfer lines and we're drawing the chamfer lines out. Doesn't look like we're going to make it too, uh, too big of a chamfer on here so it's going to be pretty small. And um, when we get this carved we're actually going to stay in the lines just like we did on the other lure. Got our knife, our carving knife, our leather strop. I already had sharpened the knife. And now we're just going to carve along the lines. As you can see, being very careful that we don't cut ourselves. I 
after every few passes. Um, I take I may take a break and um, sharpen the knife with the strop, go over a few go over a few passes, and then continue carving. Then again, as we're carving, we are eyeballing everything and making sure everything looks symmetric. That way the lure travels correctly in the water and we have uh, the correct action that we're looking for. Continuing on, we are making, uh, we are actually marking the, the slot that we're going to cut for the diving lip. I think if I remember correctly, I did this at about 45 to 50 degrees. Uh, we're using Lexan polycarbonate. I marked, I got the uh, the thickness with my calipers, and then we're marking that with, and then we're marking that on um, on the lure with the marker, using a speed square to uh, get the lines parallel to where they're supposed to be, and before we start cutting. So I'm marking everything down with the speed square, making everything making sure everything is equal and uh, in the right place and the angles are all correct and parallel and straight otherwise if we cut this if we cut the angle and the angles off then the lure is not going to work correctly all right let's see here um, looks like we are on the bandsaw and we are cutting uh, the slot for the diving lip Take your time through here. Don't rush. Okay. And I am cutting out a section of the Lexan. And we are going to um, get our lip drawn. I already drew the circle on there, um, as you can see. So now we are going to cut the shape out. Obviously, we're using the bandsaw, so we'll get the, we'll get the shape uh, rough cut. And then from there, we're going to go, and um, you'll see the next slide or two, where we're going to actually start doing some sanding work once it's cut. Well, I guess we didn't do that. Okay. So in this slide, what we're um, I'm just taking some coarse grit sandpaper um, and rounding out the um, edges. After that's all done, we're going to be taking our wire and bending it to the shape that I have drawn on the uh, lure body itself. This is this is going to be the wire that's going to actually go through the uh, through the lure. Well, okay. So in this, what we're doing here, what I'm kind of, I think what I'm doing in this video where I'm pointing to, I'm kind of pointing to uh, the plan of what we're going to do here. So I already have two holes drilled on the top. Now on numerous YouTube videos, either um, other lure makers on other videos have either A, gone uh, from the bottom, or um, there's another one, that, another guy that goes through the top of the lure and drills holes through the top. Um, I think uh, that would be the engineered angler. Um, he goes through the top, if I remember correctly, and I tried it, and it seems like a really, uh, really easy way to do this, and it's really hard to screw up. So I drilled two holes on the top, and then we cut the hole, we cut a slot down the middle of the lure, and um, from there you kind of shape the wire as you go, uh, figuring out how far down you, how far out how far you have to go and just kind of measuring things as you go and bending the wire and finally you put it get into the slot and then we epoxy it in uh, 
commitment um, to the shape of the lure. And we are and here in this video right now, uh, the the lure the wire has been inserted into the slot, um, and then as you can see the hook hangers are through the holes, and we are getting ready to um, epoxy this, and that's kind of what I'm showing at the top right here. So what we're going to do here is we can, we're going to put some tape across the top of the lure. At that point. What I, wanted, what I wanted to do was um, take 5-minute epoxy and fill the holes in between the hook hangers that the hook hangers are going through to um, secure the hook hangers. And what would happen also is the epoxy would make its way down through those holes and across the tape and would fill in that slot that the wire sits in and that would really secure the wire. So here we're mixing 5 minute epoxy and then we're going to start filling up those holes. So at this point um, after the weights were done after the weighting was done and balanced and everything um, the lure was epoxied set to dry for a few hours so at least 4 to 5 hours and then when that was all done, what I started doing was I started taking, um, I wanted, so we started painting it. And we're using white, an opaque white as a base coat. Completely, co completely cover the lure in white. Let it dry. And that's kind of what we're doing now. And after it's dry, um, I got this, this paint at um, Hobby Lobby called Space Dust. As you can see what the label says, it's an acrylic airbrush metallic that actually changes color um, based on whatever angle the light's hitting, hitting whatever it is that you painted. It has a really neat effect. So here we're taking, we're taking um, one of those colors and we are going to paint the entire lure from front to back with that color. And as you can see when, uh, when it's done being painted, you'll be able to see the effects of it, which is pretty neat. Still painting the coat. And there you can see the iridescence of the paint and the uh, color changes. Okay, here is some uh, Wicked, um, what color is that? L wicked Lime Metallic Green. And I got the stencil from uh, Hobby, or from Amazon actually. And as you can see, I used some white opaque and then the um, Wicked uh, metallic lime green. And we're going to do that on both sides. So you'll see it on both sides of the paint. And I'm probably thinking I probably should have went a little bit stronger on some of those colors. Um, so they pop a little bit more. And here you can see we're doing the other side of the lure. And we're going to paint it the exact same way that we did on the other side, but depending upon how the uh, stencil's positioned, it might look a little different, but that's okay. It's something that's completely unique and its own. Yeah, you know, kind of looking at this, I probably should have went a little stronger on, on some of these colors on these stencils. Because, um, yeah, I shouldn't have, I think I was just kind of scared at first at how they would turn out. Um, but I should have did, I should have went a little stronger on the colors. So we're doing the other side here with the white and then we did the wicked metallic lime green. And definitely I should have went a little stronger on the colors, definitely. You'll see, um, once we should get this picture up here, there it is. Yeah, yeah, I think I probably should have went a little stronger on them. But that's okay. You live and learn. First time using stencils. So next time I know, the next lure that we make on, next lure that I'm going to make on video, I'll probably end up going a lot stronger on the colors. Okay, so we're looking at the underside of the lure, and um, I think what we're going to do, we're going to get that painted really quick here. Um, so I think what we're going to see here, what color, what color did I decide to use? Let's see here. 
Ah, there we are. Fluorescent. Uh, we're using a chartreuse color. Or flore fluorescent yellow. And we're going to give that a good couple coats. Strong coats of paint. Okay, so here we are. It looks like we are actually just about done painting the chartreuse. Um, and we painted a few bright coats on to make it look really strong. Okay, maybe we should be done about now. Okay, so there we are. If you can look, it's a pretty strong color. That looks pretty neat when the sun when it's going to be pretty bright on a nice sunny day. So there's the lure paint um, completed right now. Uh, so what I'm doing here is we took an I got another template from Amazon, and I'm spraying this template on with. Um, what am I using here? It looks like a red, uh, iridescent red from Createx that I'm using on this one. And just painting it along the, keeping that top right along the, um, pretty much keeping it right along the center line of the lure. And what I was looking for when I did this, when I got, when I was doing this, these templates and these patterns, I was trying to go for a layered effect. Um, I don't know if I achieved it or not, but um, that was the goal anyways, to see if I can make a layered effect for it. And again, we're doing the other side and staying right along the uh, midline of the lure. And I kind of went, I went pretty strong on the red. Um, something I probably should have done like I said, on the green and the white. So at this point in the lure, uh, we are making the scales. I took a piece of uh, cloth, mesh cloth and wrapped it around the lure and took these black clips that you see and um, really, and that's kind of what I used to bind the, the cloth down and got it really tight. You got to have it really tight, otherwise if you don't, um, you're just going to have a lot of uh, overspray and you're not going to have these really nice clean clear um, scale markings so unfortunately my apologies on doing a lot of stuff off camera that looks like or the just the angles way off um, I have a, I'm still trying to learn the field of view and getting used to doing everything on camera and how I have to position everything so it can be seen easily um, I usually have a tendency to, like I said, pull everything in close when I'm working and working closer towards my body versus having to hold things way out in front of the camera. But we're using um, Createx Pearl White on the scales. And what the Pearl does, you can still see all the stripes, you can see everything on it, but it really dulls everything out. And that's why I'm kind of, that's why I said earlier that I kind of um, regret not making the colors really stronger um, underneath the scales and trying to get that layered effect. So with this, um, the pearl, it looks really, the scales, I don't I don't think you can really see it all that well on camera, but in person you can see the scales and it's kind of a ghosting type pattern, which um, I wasn't really going for initially, but looking at it now, I'm glad I did get that pattern. And what you can see what I'm doing now is I'm taking some uh, um, transparent black uh, paint and lightly going, um, lightly painting the top of the lure, across the top of the lure, uh, that transparent black, which normally you see on fish that the um, the top of the body is typically um, a fairly a darker color than the rest than the sides and everything. Okay, now we're making some eyeballs. What I like to do is um, I use glass half round domes that you can get on Amazon. You can get them in quarter inch, three eighths inch, and these are in half inch. Um, and the Forstner half inch bits fit perfectly with these. So I think they're like 10 millimeter. So 
I made a pattern or a stencil um, for the pupil and for the iris. The pupils I'm painting black. The iris on this one you'll see is uh, painted silver. So the irises are painted silver, um, which I should be doing shortly here if, if it comes up. And then after the irises are painted and dry, um, I then take that red, I take that iridescent red and I then just paint completely across the um, the eyeball to get that red effect. Now you can paint them in different colors. You can paint them in different patterns um, based on however you control your airbrush. Um, you can also um, use you can also use a mylar as a backing, and just if you wanted for simplicity's sake, just use the eyeball with the mylar, and you get a really neat effect. So here you can see the iridescent red um, on the back of the eyes. We're going to let that dry. We're taking some uh, steel tape or metal tape, however you want to, or aluminum tape, whatever it is. It's, it's metal. And we're going to take a half inch punch and we're going to punch two, um, we're going to make two punches out of it. And those are going to be the backings that are going to go behind the eye that are going to um, hopefully show some sort of reflection from it through the eyeballs. Here's a quick mock-up of what the eyes are going to look like on the lure. They're not glued in or anything like that. I just put them in just to kind of mock them up and show you what they look like. So this is the part that I am least familiar with, I am least comfortable with, and I probably screwed this up probably five or six times. So um, I'm painting some gills using the stencils, and um, this requires a really good control with the airbrush. So the gills were painted and now I'm just kind of taking different colors and kind of filling in the color, kind of filling in the head and the gills so I can get some sort of pearl type, uh, like mother of pearl type effect on it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for here. I've never done it before. It's the first time I've ever done it. Um, I honestly don't really know how it, I, I mean for me it, I thought it turned out pretty good. But um, I'll let you guys that view it can um, comment on what you guys think about, think about it. And if you guys have any really good tips about um, uh, better making better gills and better paint control or whatever, I'm open to suggestions. So you can leave those in the comments below as well. So we're just taking, like I said, just a bunch of different colors and just kind of randomly just placing them along the gills to get that mother of pearl type effect. And actually there you can kind of see the scales and you can see how they ghost everything. And I probably should have, like I said, I probably should have went way stronger on a lot of the colors. The green, that um, metallic lime green, that iridescent red, all the stuff that I did with the stencils and the patterns. I probably should have went a lot stronger with the colors. So at this point, we are about done with the lure. Um, the final stages is just painting and painting the fins. I have stencils that I made uh, for the fin. So you'll see I'll paint it in um, opaque white. And then what you're going to see in the next uh, couple slides is um, I'm going to go over the fins after the white's dry with a pencil to kind of imitate the rays of the fin. And then again, go over that, go over that after, and then go over all of that with uh, the pearl white to kind of give it that um, uh, a muted type effect. And then after that, we're going to mix our two-part epoxy, uh, put our two-part, two, um, paint the two-part epoxy on, uh, being very, very careful that we don't get any of it on the uh, diving lip. And then we're going to put it on our rotisserie, let it sit for um, at least uh, overnight, 
maybe 24 hours for the paint to, uh, for the finish to actually uh, cure. And then um, you're going to see at the end of this video, you're going to uh, see the lure actually in action. Um, so with that said, after everything's done here, after the lure, um, I just want to thank everyone. If you've actually watched through this entire video, I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Even if you've watched a bit of uh, bits and pieces of it, thank, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to um, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I'd really appreciate it. It really um, kind of give, it just helps build the channel. And, um, well, with that said, after we're done signing it and um, we get to these next few, this next slide, enjoy uh, watching the learn action. And with that, thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a great day. And don't forget, I'll be putting another video up, so we'll see you on the next one. Thank you and, don't, and enjoy the video while we're watching uh, the lure work. This is the through wire crankbait, similar to the other one that I just made and filmed. This one's made to rise, to dive, and then to rise slowly. So let's see what happens. Oh, runs nice. Let's see what happens. It goes down nose first, which I don't like. I do what I wanted it to do. But let's see how it swims. Run, runs true. Dives. Wow. Why wow, does it dive? If you guys can see that. That has a pretty cool look to it. Let's try this again. It's going really fast. Oh yeah. That's nice. Cast beautifully. Uh, either it it dove down that deep. Wow. Holy shnikes. It sinks. It doesn't do what I wanted it to do. Back to the drawing board. I think it needs less weight. Yep, needs less weight. But all in all, I mean, it works. It'll catch something. 